Hi everyone, my name is Nick Caruso, and today we're going to be showing how we can integrate a Samsung multifunction device and scan documents directly into an Athena Health. And what we're going to be doing is I'm f doing this as more like a part two to the REST API um, video I did recently because Athena Health has a fantastic REST API. So it's actually pretty easy to do this. Um, so what this means is that clinical staff, if they've got documents like a consent form or et cetera, they can go to a multifunction device, they can search for a patient from Athena, scan directly to that patient record. I think that's pretty cool. And I'm going to be showing you how to do that in VB.net and VB script. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, a big part of this channel is talking about AutoStore, um, but a lot of these scripts are just VB scripts and VB.net scripts. So you can uh, learn a lot about how to interface with REST APIs as well from looking at this channel. Um, but because we are talking about AutoStore, I'm going to show you how on the panel of the device, you can search for a patient and uh, find a patient, select a patient, and scan that document, convert it to a searchable PDF, and then upload it to Athena Health. All right, so a little bit more background as I close down my quick PowerPoint. So uh, I don't know what the Athena Health uh, electronic health record or medical record system looks like. I grabbed this picture off the internet, um, but pretend you're in the uh, record with a patient, you've got a consent form, you need to scan it. How cool would it be to scan directly to that patient record? Well, it recently came to my attention that Athena Health has this fantastic REST API, and, and this is the REST API. And if you saw my previous video, you could see how um, once you know how to interface with REST APIs, you can just start intuitively understanding how to work with different APIs. So here's an example of all of their different API calls. It's pretty cool. You can book an appointment, you can verify an appointment. I guess you can search for clinical providers, you can get employees. It's a huge API. You can make appointments, etc. Um, but one of these API points down here is get patients. And very similar to what I shared with you before, you would do a get call off of patients. Um, here it looks like you need to pass in the um, practice ID, um, which makes sense. So if, uh, and, and through this UI, similar to the video I'd shown before, if you put in the, um, you can actually use this UI to, to test. So I'm gonna put in my practice ID. Now I do know that one of the fields in here that is required as an, well, as a, it needs a search parameter. So I'm gonna search against Jones. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit, click on search or try it. Okay, so you see it's running. Uh, now right now uh, you're gonna see this authentication token. This is actually super secret, but by the time this video goes out, this will have expired, but you'll need to get your own authentication token. All right, uh, and boom, here are the results with the patients. Um, so now that we know how to query patients in the Athena system, let's push that to the panel of a multifunction device. Um, now I was using Samsung as an example because I just wanted to play around with the Samsung uh, scripting language for AutoStore, uh, but really this can be done on any multifunction device from a Xerox or Rico, et cetera. Konica Minolta and so forth. Um, and there's another endpoint in here. So that's how you get a patient. Um, but there's another endpoint in here about posting documents. So how cool is that, right? Create a document in AthenaNet. And so there's an API for a post. Now in my previous video, I said probably posting documents, you will use a multi-form data, multi-part form data, which I did not in my previous video. Um, and, but I said that most typically it's multi-part form data, and sure enough, here's an example. So in this video, you're going to see how to use VBScript to post to a multi-part form data, and they've got some additional uh, metadata fields in here. Okay. So what's great is that you can use this UI for testing. Um, unfortunately, uh, AthenaNet, when I did run a test here, it's giving me this 500 internal server error, which means that they've got a problem on their end. Um, and I, the reason I know that is because if I intentionally do something wrong, like um, I don't put in some of the metadata fields in here, I get a different error, like a 400 error. So I know I pass the what's required and how to send it. Internal error usually means that there's something wrong on their end. And that could be because this is a demo environment that I have access to here. And so maybe, yes, you can upload the PDF, but after that, they're just going to error out because they're really not going to do anything with it. Um, but I have actually asked them a question about it. But it seems like this is exactly how you do it. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm just going to sh show you this, and I'm, of course, all the code's going to be available. So here is 
what the UI looks like on a Samsung multifunction device. So the Samsung multifunction device um, appears to have an internal web browser. And that internal web browser, AutoStore is taking advantage of that. So um, it's painting a, a UI. And because it's a web browser, we can test it without actually being on a Samsung multifunction device. So if I click here, send this to Athena, I just have a very simple form in here, search by last name, and then the results of the patients. There's no results in here right now. So a more elegant way of doing this would probably be to hide this field if there were no patients, uh, no searches yet. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna go ahead and search on Jones. And you can see it's a little spinning here, so it's searching right now, and then I see my results, and boom, I get the results. So that's pretty fast, that's pretty cool that I was able just to search against the Athena Health uh, system. And I can filter this down, et cetera, and I can go ahead and select on a patient record to send it, I hit done, and at this point I would hit next, okay, to, to scan my document. Um, pretty basic, but the power of here is showing how we can search against the Athena Health system. And as I shared you with, with you before, once you know how to interface with REST APIs, the whole world opens up to you. Uh, so if uh, another quick demo is if I also do this in auto capture, I want to send a file from my local system without a multifunction device into Athena Health. So I'm using auto capture with this great tool. And uh, just to show it to you, I go in here and I am just doing a, a search against Smith automatically. I didn't build out the form for like what's the last name or whatever. It's just hard coded to Smith. And you can see here, here are the Smith results. And by the way, the number here to the right is the patient ID. All right. Uh, and when I submit this, um, you'll see it. Oh, I didn't have status monitor running. We'll have to do it again. Oh, I guess it picked it up in, uh, quick enough. All right, so you can see here, um, Auto Capture or Samsung will pick up the document, will process it, will send it to a workflow. And from here, uh, through VB Script, I am, I am then uploading that to the patient ID uh, and into the Athena Health API. All right, so uh, let's go back to the API just briefly here. So for sending documents, I'm using this URL, which is really the patient ID, oh wait, the, uh, what's that, the clinic ID or something like that, the practice ID, patients, the, um, the patient ID, and then the documents endpoint. And then for to get patients, if I scroll all the way down, uh, practice ID slash patients, but that get call, which makes sense, I'm getting patients versus the other ones, I'm posting documents. All right, so let's take a look at the script code. And of course, this script code is available and it's and is open sourced. Um, so let's, uh, if you, the other video goes over uh, doing a REST API with auto capture. So I'm just gonna go into the Samsung. This was my first time uh, interfacing with a Samsung capture component. Um, so uh, just off the bat real quick, um, some little internal um, things uh, from my experience working uh, at, at NSI Nuance. Um, it, it looks like they are standardizing their capture components based upon the original Xerox EIP component, which is great. It's great to have standardization because if you've, uh, over the years, there's been uh, lots of different UIs uh, on the capture components. Um, and just a little hint, um, that difference was really based upon the development team that was working on it. So there was a certain team that would work on like the Rico and a certain team that would work on the Xerox and a certain team that would work on the Conic Minolta. And so that's why you got some discrepancies in the, the reason the UIs were a little bit different. Um, but, but it looks like uh, Xerox, uh, I mean, Nuance is doing great in uh, standardizing. Um, and I was, as I was quickly looking at this, uh, everything's standard. Um, does look like they're doing either an FTP or WebDAV. I don't know why you would need both, but maybe there is. So it looks like there's actually three ports in here. If you're interested, maybe I'll do a more of a video on, you know, when I look at a new capture component, what I'm looking for, how I'm looking, how I'm going to support it in production, etc. All right, so if we go in here to the, the Athena Health, I can go in here and just create a script. I'm going to go ahead and edit the script so I can show it to you and this script is very, very similar to the Xerox one. It's great to see that Nuance is starting to standardize on their scripting language. Um, all right, so um, so this is vb.net. So what I'm doing here is uh, on search on change, which searches my field name, I am um, getting the value of the search, which would be John, or, or I'm sorry, Smith or Jones or et cetera, and then I'm calling this gate patients subroutine, which I created. Um, and so here you can see the URL to get the patients. Uh, it looks like I, I'm um, 
I'm passing in some, some hard-coded values in here, um, but here is searching by last name. And then this is going to be very similar to the VB script. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm creating my, um, my, I'm getting access to my uh, HTTP web request objects. This is going to be a get method. I'm expecting an application.json response. And then here's my security token. Now, the security token right now, I'm able to get through the developer's API. And, and anybody on, the, on viewing this can actually get access to and register for a um, access to the Athena, AthenaNet um, demo REST API. So uh, when you do that, you get access to what's called a, a, a um, usually a key and a secret key, or a token and a secret key. And when you use those two values, which you're supposed to keep very secret, when you use those two values, you get what's called an authentication token. And then that token usually depends upon the, the, um, the company. That token can last indefinitely, or it can last like 15 minutes. And it seems like the AthenaNet uh, uh, token here only lasts like about 15 minutes. So in a production environment, I would be using the secret key and and uh, the client code to re-authenticate. So there would be an authentication subroutine in here to re-authenticate, which would get back a token. So I would probably be doing this on every request. So I would first pass in this secret key and this ID. I then get back this uh, security token. And then that's what you use to interface against the REST API. And there's usually a REST endpoint to, to do that. All right, so I've got my token. And then I do my get request. Here's where it gets a little bit complicated with uh, vp.net, um, and that is this whole concept of transforming this JSON object that you get back from the HTTP request and transforming it into vb.net land, or .net land in general, and that's the whole concept of arrays and dictionaries and things like that. So you kind of have to uh, know what the response object is going to look like. Let me go back to our get request here. And uh, fortunately, AthenaNet has done a great job in their standardization. So this is very, very standard. I have an JSON object. I have a, a parameter here called next. Um, this would give me the next set of 10 results. I have a patient's parameter. And my patient's parameter is an array. So array means you know multiple patients. And in each array or in each patient, I have another JSON object with a parameter of the field name and the value. So I really have what in, in .NET land, I have a dictionary first, and then I have an array, and then I have another dictionary. So you kind of have to look at this, and, and um, you have to transpose that into uh, .NET speak. So I need to start converting this JSON object into an initial dictionary. And then from the dictionary, I get uh, this patience, which is really an array list. And then that means I can loop through this array. And uh, fortunately, somewhere along the lines, .NET figured out that the array was actually also was an array of objects or an array of dictionaries. And then now I can, now that I'm looping through these, this array, I can get the patient and I can get the first name, last name, and the patient ID. All right, so from a VB.NET perspective, if you're not using Autostore, this script alone will help out a lot in using VB.NET to interface with a REST API. All right, the second part of this is, so that's the uh, um, looking up against the REST API. Now, how about if we're sending data? So my previous video and my previous sample code, which is called REST demo, I showed um, something almost very, very similar to this, but it was um, uh, doing a post of the document via a REST API, so all that is the same. But the way the file was being transmitted itself, the PDF, it was a base64 encoded PDF in an attribute. And I said in that previous video that that's possible, but it does actually add, I think, about 20 to 30 percent overhead on doing all of that. So what's much more common when you're uploading files is to use a multi-part form data, which is unfortunately in much more complicated. So fortunately for you, if you ever need to do a multi-part form upload with VB script, you can look and use this code in here. Um, now, fortunately, somebody on the internet already did it. Um, so I was able to use um, their code. I am going to highlight here 
something very, very, very important, which took actually, I have somebody on my team that helped out on this. Um, this took us the most amount of time, which was great. I can send the document. How do I send additional metadata? So there was a, an attribute called document class. I want to put in here admin consent. Now this would normally be a variable, but you know, what type of document is it a consent form, whatever. So you not only want to send the document, but how do you send metadata as well? And uh, this part was the most complicated, but um, this these three lines of code, um, I would say are worth like $5,000 worth of value. And just, it looks like three lines is pretty simple, but how do you send a multi-part form uh, upload with additional metadata in the same payload? So it's in there, okay? Uh, all right, so uh, in wrapping this up, um, uh, this, uh, well, a couple things. One is, if you want to play around with this yourself, you're going to have to get your own um, credentials to the Athena API. You're going to have to then go into that API to generate your own token. And then in each of the script files, there's usually up at the top where you need to paste this token. So this token only lasts, I think, for about 10 or 15 minutes. Okay. Let's go ahead and look at the, form, uh, the folder structure here. So what uh, my team is doing is we are building an Autostar Workflows open source repo on GitHub. And uh, in each, uh, on this repo, we're going to be adding folders for different examples. So these two were just uploaded recently here, sent to EMR. It's called sent to EMR, not sent to Athena, because I have a feeling that we're going to be doing more than just Athenas, just more than just example Athenas. How cool would it be to have uh, lots of different EMR systems shown in here? All right, we are standardizing on a folder structure. So once you learn how to use a folder, uh, the folder structure, it's going to be pretty simple. You've got your config file in here. To run it, here would be your code samples in here. One point of caution with, all, with um, when you're interfacing with a REST API in our code, we are using some um, libraries that are available in this library here. This is from Microsoft, but it's you have to copy this library into the auto store. I'm sorry, yes, into the auto store directory. All right, and then uh, just a sample PDF in here, just save everybody a bunch of time, and then your temp folders in here for Autostore. All right, I hope this helps. Um, I, in addition, let me just open up the, um, the Git repo that I talked about. So here's the Git repo, uh, and uh, we just launched this two days ago, so you can see stuff in here. Um, and uh, and you can download the repo and, and run all the code that, that we're covering here. This is intended to be open source, which means it's a community collaborative effort. If you would like to contribute to this repo, that would be awesome. And if you have any questions, post the questions in here or post comments. Um, so Paul Kroon, um, he posted a comment in here, which was awesome and really helped me out which was, hey, here are all the URLs for the web-based components and some instructions on how to do this. And so I knew what URL to hit to play around with uh, the demo. So thank you, Paul, for doing that. All right, so do me a favor, uh, a couple things. One is, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Please share this channel, um, this YouTube channel, with your other colleagues. My goal is to not just focus on Autostore, focus on coding in general and scripting in general, and also bringing in other technologies in here, not just Autostore, into the YouTube channel, but other ones as well. All right. So I appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, um, please respond to comments below or go to this repo and you can post questions through the issues. All right, everybody. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.